we're back with another episode of On the Record with Tiffany and Kevin. Yeah, here on 9.30 a.m., the answer home of conservative talk radio, where we get straight to it, no chaser. Tell people <laughs> what's up when it comes down to kidneys. You're getting the real deal on transplantation, on early detection, on all the stuff that really matters to the people that we serve. And we have the wonderful honor of having Mr. Reginald Ballard with us, uh, talking to people and giving them the straight dope about kidney disease. There it is. There you go. <laughs> I got a lot to talk about. I got a lot to talk about. I got a lot I was up peeing all night last night. I don't know why, but this kidney was active last night. <laughs> I was like, I think I got up about eight times, man. I'm like, wow, what's going on? But, you know, when I drink a lot of water in the day, that, that usually happens. So Good. I love Reginald sharing. He gives more information. <laughs> <laughs> that you thought you wanted to know. And who's our special <laughs> and who's our special guest, Tiffany? Yes, and we have just one of the best advocates I have seen for transplantation. A very genuine, good person and also fierce advocate, uh, Miss Latrice Light. Lights. Yay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yay. She is a light. She's a, a light. She literally is, is joy wrapped up in, a, in one person and hope yeah. when she walks into the room. She brings that. All right. That kind of energy. So I'm proud mm -hmm. to have you here today, Latrice. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And what a wonderful introduction. I can't wait to get started. <laughs> All right. So let's, Latrice. Tell us a little bit about your story and about the organization. Uh, give us the, uh, the abbreviated version of that. Okay, so my husband and I started Shining Lights, Inc. We specialize in the overall health of diabetes care, as well as organ donation and transplantation. And it came about because I was diagnosed as a juvenile type 1 diabetic at the age of 1. So I was just a baby in diapers, and my mom had to start giving me these insulin shots. I spent 42 years as a diabetic before I went through with a pancreas transplant in 2020. So I still have my kidneys, but in the height of the pandemic, my sugars began to drop really, really low, like pretty much on a consistent basis. And the next best thing was going to be a transplant, which I was introduced to my husband and I and doing research and talking to the surgeon was like, yeah, we need to jump on board with this. And three years later, here I am three years later, no longer a diabetic and feeling great. That great. That's is awesome. That's good. That's good. They, I, a lot of people don't uh, understand the difference between a type 1 and a type 2 diabetic. What's the difference? So type 1 is myself. I was a juvenile um, diagnosed at the age of 1. So I was a baby. Some type 1s, I mean, it just depends on the pan your pancreas and how much insulin it actually is producing because you can be like 40 years old, 50 these days, 60, just depending and be type one. It just depends on how active uh, your pancreas is, how much insulin it is producing. That's the the big portion. Is how much is, how much insulin is your pancreas producing? I always thought that that like um, juvenile di diabetics were type one. I didn't know that you could become a, that you can eventually become a type one diabetic later in life. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I thought so juvenile later in life. I thought you was that type two. Well, juvenile is different from type one. So juvenile, remember, are going to be like your your children, your little ones. Um, but you can be diagnosed at, like I said, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, all the way up and be considered a type one. Type two comes in, um, your pancreas is usually still producing some some insulin and you might just need a little bit of help. Like you, you may need one insulin shot you may need two insulin shots it just depends and that could also consider you type one or type two um some type two take pills to help with the the insulin right. um, and then some just work off exercise and diet so it just really depends on how much insulin your pancreas is producing mm -hmm. with so the later stage 
type one? Are there symptoms that uh, a person should be looking for at, that are you know telling them, hey, you you might be a type one diabetic? That that's hard to determine in regards to what type you are. That's where the testing comes in. But mm -hmm. some of the symptoms that say you might be a diabetic would be frequent urination, um, thirsty, like for anything, a, a lot of water. Um, my son's father actually was diagnosed later in life as type two. He was 30 years old, type two. His pancreas was still produce, producing insulin but he needed help. So he would do things like, I'm thirsty, but not for water. Like I want a soda or I want some juice. And he would drink like a thing of juice like this big and he's wow. drinking it all at one time. Um, and what they say is once the sugar level gets to a high point, it's just going to continue to grow higher. It's like, give me more sugar, give me more sugar. I just want more and more sugar. So again, it just varies on when you catch it. Yeah, and that's just yeah. Really I know my symptoms. Oh, yeah, okay. No, go right ahead. No, now, I, I know my symptoms when I discovered I was that a type two. You know, like she say, um, I, I, I remember it vividly. It was I, I was doing a show called True Colors, and I was on a set, and that's the day that Magic Johnson, I think, announced his um, you know, his uh, HIV uh, diagnosis, and I, I was real thirsty, and um, I, I was peeing almost every. 20 minutes I was going to the bathroom going to the bathroom and um, man it's just like an unquenchable thirst it's a, it's, you know you, you ever look at a vampire movie you see how vampires be wanting the blood that's how I wanted <laughs> water I just wanted to drink water wanted to drink well, I didn't yeah. want to drink juice I wanted water 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 and you know I went to the doctor and this lady doctor told me yeah you know they did my blood test I, was, I think my shit was at 300 wow and um, yeah it was 300 and she said she told me well, uh, what diabetics do, they drink juice. So go home and drink a lot of juice. That was the wrong That's advice to give any diabetic mm -hmm. to drink juice after your sugar is 300. And I felt a little dizzy when I was, I was drinking a big old thing of grape, Welch's grape juice, man. I thought I was going to pass out, man. I, you know, it, she gave me the wrong advice, man. Yeah. <laughs> and please don't yeah. say lady doctor. I don't need women <laughs> being, calling us, emailing us. <laughs> No, he's just, just telling you this is who this was. <laughs> don't <laughs> don't send us emails. Don't, don't, don't go start. to urgent care. That's usually the first thing they'll say. Make sure you go to the emergency room where they actually yeah. have doctors on staff. Yeah. I exactly. get that a lot. Yeah. That, was um, the urgent yeah. that, that was the wrong advice. That yeah. 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 It's like yeah. your body was your body was trying to tell you. Our sugar is going up and we need it to come down. So it's it's craving that water. But once you get to that sugar level goes to a certain point, it's like, all right, right fine. Just, just give me some more sugar. Because it's, so funny it's like, because, yeah, yeah, because I was I was like, I, you know, um, I, 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 I think I just finished eating and I was full and we was driving back home and I saw this place. It had a, a, a turkey burgers and I was already full. So I say, you know what they got to? We never had a turkey burger before. And uh, I say, let's go try one. We, and I ate that burger. Soon after I ate that burger, I felt different. It was a whole different feeling about my whole body. And that's when I started feeling thirsty at that moment. Now, I wonder if I was diabetic before that or at that time I ate that burger and overate because I was feeling, I felt, though, I, I, you know, for some reason in my head, I knew w what was the problem, you know, because my grandmother was diabetic. So I, you know, I automatically knew, man, and um, yeah, that that's that's what I, I remember that day like it was yesterday. But um, yeah, man, and and I used to take my kid to babysit, and I used to couldn't wait to get to L.A. to take my son to get just so I could drink some water. <laughs> so that's the symptom, people. If you have you like uh, um, unquenchable thirst, and you go into the bathroom every fifteen, twenty, you know, minutes, you better get checked. Yeah, and that's important to get that under wraps because diabetes is the number one cause of, of, of kidney failure because of yeah. uh, because that unreal unregulated sugar it's damaging the kidneys and then over process right. over time you know it just it it just destroys the kidneys and that's one of the reasons that's important to address that issue and that's why we really yeah. put a lot of emphasis on early detection on early detection of you know we of uh, kidney disease, but we really try to take a 10,000 
uh, foot view of this because it's the diseases like diabetes and hypertension that actually lead to kidney disease and mm -hmm. pancreatic failure. Those things lead to it. So we have to, to cut off the head of the snake in order to actually stop this. And that's going to be diabetes. Mm -hmm. Finding it early uh, it. Is, is really the key. Early detection. And that can be done through your blood work. Your annual checkup is the place to look for diabetes, for quote-unquote pre-diabetes. That's where you want to ask, and you want to ask questions. What, what are my blood sugars? Where are they in, in terms of, of uh, normalcy? I need to know. Like, what's the stages here? The hemoglobin A1C is the blood work that Tiffany is speaking of. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So can you talk a little bit about that? Because do you all do early detection um, uh, promotion and education? Well, my business, our corporation, yes, we do. Um, mm -hmm. We don't actually do it hands on, but we can refer you to where you need to go to have this done. Um, but we don't do like any hands on uh, blood work or anything of that right. sort, just for the patient's safety as well as our safety. So we would uh, find a location closest to you and refer you to them if it's of your choosing, of course. But yes, early detecting is very, very important. That's that's actual activity said it's key. And the reason that it's key is because it can help you live a longer active life um in my case i guess it it i mean it can be earlier than that but at that particular time that was like one of the earliest cases right. um since then there have been cases like uh babies that are like six months three months it just Again, it all depends because now the, the blood work that they're doing when you have a baby is very, very accurate. It's very uh, hit up. So it gives you a wider spectrum now than it did back then when I was diagnosed. But my case was like, oh, my gosh, here comes this baby. And, you know, we have to treat this baby and we have to teach mom everything and things of that sort. But again, that was a, a long, long time ago. So things have changed since then, which is actually for the better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Talk What's about the lifestyle. Agency, talk about the lifestyle adjustments, Reg. I know you talk about this a lot on the radio show. You know, and, you, know you and I kind of tease each other back and forth with, you know, vegan versus, you know, the different right. meals you have to adjust. Right. So uh, talk about a little bit of that. Both of you. Right. What have you had to do to adjust the food that you eat, right? Because I've been trying some of that food from Trader Joe's, and it's actually good, Rich. It's really, really well, good. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, and we yeah, we yeah. do a lot of a lot of work around food is medicine because food truly yeah. is medicine. Yeah. It is it is what fuels your body or what kills your body. So yeah. it, it can either be be a, a lifeline for you, or it can be life extinguishing. And you all have it's, chosen to utilize food as a lifeline. So let's tell people about how you're doing that. It's it's, it's very conflicting. It's a conflicting thing, man. I, I was watching this documentary. I think it was um, um, Fork, Forks Over Knives. I think it was something like that. And they was talking about, um, they say sugar is not the thing that causes diabetes. And they say it's, it's the meat causes diabetes. But you know, I did a, um, they had this thing called, is, 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 is a clinic called Lindora out here, Lindora. Lindora is a clinic that, 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 that feeds you protein and vegetables, pretty much, you know, it's almost like a keto diet. Now, when I was doing that diet on the meat, I was eat, I would eat like, um, you know, um, maybe eggs in the morning. And then the second meal, I have like a protein shake. And the third meal, you have like chicken breast and, uh, you know, and when I was doing that diet, my blood sugars were normal. I mean, I was like leveled, you know? Mm -hmm. And then now that I don't eat meat, it's funny, man, because now you eating more carbs and the more carbs you eat, the worse, your, the, the higher your sugar levels is going to go. So I really have to be careful. And, and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of rethinking things now sometimes. I'm like, you know what? When I was doing the indoor, man, my sugar was so good because I was doing the, and then you lose a lot of weight because you're going to ketosis. 
when you do the protein and the vegetables. So you keep so so you losing weight like when you sleep. You know, you have, you know, urinate on these sticks and they show you the darker the stick, you know, the the more body fat you're burning. So I, I'm I'm like I'm caught in between. I don't know which way to go. It's like I feel better. Like my cholesterol is normal now since I haven't had meat since Christmas. But that's because of the kidney the girl gave me. She was vegetarian. And now I don't crave meat no more because I got the kidney. From the girl. You know, that's crazy. It's, 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 it's crazy. But when I was doing it, you know, my sugars were, were, were normal and I was losing the weight easy. It wasn't, it wasn't hard to lose weight. It was just dropping off like that, man. So I don't know. You know, I don't know. I guess I don't know if it's the individual thing or. Um, well, there's data you know, to support I, I, what you're saying about the keto diet, and yeah, it has yeah, been yeah. very effective in helping uh, to regulate uh, blood sugars, but also but, uh, for people who are who are having kidney problems. That, yeah, then I heard I heard too much protein on your kidneys is an overload, and it could it could destroy the kidney too. Is well, that, they you know, when when people are doing this particular diet. Uh, now, what, what we've seen in the literature is that they regulate it. So it's not, they kind of do a little hybrid, right? The stuff that you see is yeah, like they, they're doing, it, it, it's like there are more vegetables. You're reducing, what you're reducing is more, your, are your processed foods. So you're yeah. reducing your sugar. So you're, it's going to be a really high veggie diet, right? Uh, and then mm. you're going to eat protein moderately. Yeah. You're not going to be, like I can't go ham, literally ham. It's not uh, like uh, what right, keto right, right. people uh, normally uh, yeah. do. So I, <laughs> yeah. So like when, I, when, when I'm doing something similar to that, for me, I have to cut back on nitrates. So mm -hmm. like oh, bacon, yeah, right, right, right. I got to cut back bacon, pepperoni, right. all that food that right. I that I like, right? That I quote unquote like. Right. That keto draws right. you to because it's tasty. But you have to, you have to cut <laughs> back on those foods, and you have yeah. to have more of a more veggies, and you have to have less processed foods, and then you have right. to watch those things that are high in nitrates. Because I notice that when I uh, when I eat things like bacon and, and that's high in nitrates, my blood pressure is higher, right? Yes. And yes. Uh, mm -hmm. so that tends to be an issue. You, and so I have to really di dial in on my individual needs, which is low nitrates, uh, which is a moderate amount of protein. I, I can't eat all of what I would do, say, like 10 years ago. So I have to watch that. And so I've noticed right. uh, with my own personal kidney function, depending on where I'm at with that, it tends to go up a little bit higher when I when I eat consistently. And I have to uh, soda. I generally have to get rid of the soda. So you really, you're right. Yeah. You have to dial it in to your individual needs and you just have to watch the blood work. Yes, yes. Is that similar with I you, agree. Latrice, or something um, different? I've never done keto. Again, we, we're, we're going back in time. So when the, the <laughs> time that I was diagnosed, a lot of the options that we have now, we didn't have. So yeah. I had the type of grandmother that was like, don't treat that baby like that. Just give her a little bit. So instead yeah. of be giving like, instead of giving me a small fry, it might be like, we we'll just give her six French fries, which actually began my first remembrance of starting to count the carbs. Um, mm -hmm. Went to a diabetic camp at the age of five and they teach you how to take care of your diabetes because again, diabetes is usually, especially juvenile, is something that you're going to grow with. I had no idea that they were doing, um, pancreas transplants they started doing it back in the 80s and i just found out in 2020 that they were doing it back in the 80s but again back when i was growing up things were just totally di different and we did not have the same options that i have today um i remember when diet sodas got really popular and i was like oh i finally get to drink a soda but now that I'm I'm older and knowing the things that I know, I'm like, if I have to have a soda, I would rather it be a diet ginger ale versus yeah. a, I don't know what's in that other stuff. Like, why is it that yeah. color? Why does it taste so syrupy? Right. Like, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. So I really stay away from sodas unless it's like a diet ginger ale. Yeah. Um, and I drink those occasionally. Of course, if your stomach's feeling a little upset, you might want to have one with some saltine crackers or something like that. You know, that old school stuff. But um, yeah. yeah, so times are just different. So uh, again, a lot of these diets and stuff that are new, um, I do strongly believe in fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. Um, trying to get those in quite a few times a week are 
a plus. And again, mm-hmm. everything that a diabetic takes in, it's going to turn to sugar anyway. It doesn't matter what it is. The body's going to break it down, turn it into sugar because it needs that sugar. That's the fuel. Um, where the diabetes can kind of get dangerous is the body trying to separate those fuels. So if you're giving it, um, let's say a sandwich. So you have two pieces of bread. Usually you'll have um, some meat, which will be your protein. So you have your starch, your protein, your condiments, which would usually be like your ketchup, mustard, mayo, whatever you may use. And then usually we'll do like a vegetable, like lettuce, tomato, stuff like that. So you have a full meal in that one sandwich, but then you say, hmm, I'm going to throw a milkshake on top of that, which is full of sugar. Yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Break yeah. down that yeah. 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 And yeah. you know, have to break down that milkshake, which is too much sugar at that point. So that's where those issues come into play. But I noticed, I noticed one thing that don't make my sugar ever go up is meat. When I ate meat, my sugar never jumped. It never jumped. Everything yes. else, bread, is going to go up. You know, but vegetables, it, it don't jump. Everything else, I mean, like you say, uh, uh, the, the, the meat and the vegetables, sugar stay like that, man. Probably when you never have to take insulin. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. everything else, everything else, <laughs> outside of protein and vegetables, your sugar going to go up. That's what I realized, you know, as a diabetic. Yes. And some people, that's a part of that diet exercise. So yeah. they'll stay away, totally stay away from all starches and just do, just like you said, focus in yeah. on the meat and the vegetables and they don't have to take any insulin. So, well, yeah. I have yeah. like a steak for dinner with some broccoli and I've already gone for my two mile walk for yeah. the evening and my blood sugars are absolutely terrific. Kevin, I might have to go back to that, man. I might have to go back to that meat and uh, vegetables again, man. I mean, you know, just, you know, um, because when I when I look at it and I break it down, that's been the go-to. That's been what have kept my sugar at a normal level when I ate like that. And I don't know, you know, for some reason, man, I don't know. I probably got the wrong kidney now. <laughs> you got the vegetarian but, 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 kidney. You know what? You know what's interesting is that you have to experiment and watch your blood work and, and just be in yeah. tune to your body, yeah. right? Especially, right, uh, right. I think you said this, Red. You, you always said if you don't, if you don't realize that your food is your medicine, your medicine will become your food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah, yeah, let that yeah. food. This, this, and so, I think that was uh, um, uh, who was Hippocrates? You said, "Let that food be that medicine." And thy medicine be thy food. Yeah, mm-hmm, so, that's right. Because, because, like you say, this diabetes lead to kidney. I, and, and it's funny, man. Like you say that that you just found out about um, 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 what you said. You just found out as as a, a adult about diabetes. You said something. You just found out. Oh, the transplant. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the transplant. Uh, and, and people, you know, like the kidney thing. You know, um, I just did a, uh, a we did a play. I did a play this weekend in Detroit, man. You know, we had about thousand people man this is pretty much sold out the theater and after the show you know because i'm sure i do a comedy i do a little comedy bit after the show so you know i talked about the texas kidney foundation and these old ladies man they came up to me this one lady you know she wasn't that old but you know she was saying that she have to have a kidney and she was asking me questions and i was telling her about you know um it's funny because i'm in michigan talking about texas kidney foundation i don't know if they got their own foundation (laughs) that's the only one i know i say you know so well I said, you know, get in touch with in touch with them, and I was telling them about the um, the swap thing. They yeah. they have no, they had no clue that you could do that, man. They have no clue that you know you can, you know, you just need somebody that's willing to donate mm-hmm. a kidney, and it, it's crazy how they just come up to me and be telling me, asking me about that stuff. And you know, this is a good place for us to uh, wrap up this segment, and I do want to to. Uh, to talk about the kidney swap because if you are interested in getting a kidney and you need a kidney or you want to give a kidney, um, pair donation is really the way to go. It is. And that is where a person who needs a kidney is paired with somebody who can give a kidney. You don't have to be a perfect match. The uh, National Kidney Registry will do the rest and help you walk through Mm -hmm. the process. It is worth your time 
and interest, especially if you are a person of color. And I, when we come back in the next segment, we're going to talk about transplantation and what Texas mm-hmm. Kidney Foundation is doing in regards to that. And I'd like to talk a little bit with both of you about what it's like uh, as an African American, because there are some some things that we deal with in terms of healthcare disparities that nobody can highlight better than the four of us. You know, ninety nine forty four. We we got to do that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. You've been listening to On the Record with Tiffany and Kevin with our wonderful co-host. Uh, well, I, I guess you're almost a co-host, Reginald, because you're always on here with us. <laughs> and, um, and just my good friend, uh, Latrice Lights of uh, Shining Lights Foundation. Let's come back and talk some more. <laughs> 